first, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your main making of the services the main these committee. I can number one, apologies for answers. Councillors Harrington, Mark, Hare, Parkin, and Mark. I consider declaration of interest. Yes, I have one, sir. Declaration of interest on the January 2nd letter. I would be stopping the room, there's not a of interest there. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's not the council claim for you. I have three public questions. Okay, just to clarify for everybody in attendance tonight, as the town clerk has stated there, we haven't received any public questions in accordance with standing lot 30 and I in the specified time period. However, we have received some correspondence pertaining to agenda item number nine. So if you indulgence, I will outline a procedure for members of the public if you so wish to ask some questions at the appropriate time. Item number four, the Edward Protection Table. We would request to consider the February update from the Durham County Council. Councillor Yellow. Thank you, Chair. Can I move that the information is received as everyone's appreciation for the good work that the Neighbourhood Protection Team do across the county and especially in Stenmore? Stenmore, Chair. Everyone comfortable with that? Yes. <coughs> Item five, Temporary Guardian of Remembrance. We have a letter from Mr. Foster, David Seventh of Edward in connection with that matter. Councillor, uh, sorry, Mr. Foster is requesting that we allow him to a uh, drug head service committee to uh, direct the temporary guardian of remembrance in Germany Park by the Barbastone, which will be there for a period of three or four days. Any comments? Can, I just, can I just say, Chair, for the benefit of the minutes, um, Mr. Foster is my full cousin, so I'm declaring an interest in accordance with the officer code. Uh, Councillor Thank you, Chairman. The Drumhead Service is a service that we've supported now for a good few years. It is a very nice service in the town um, to premier our armed forces and how well they do up and down the country. And in that, I will fully support once again uh, any venture that Mr. Foster and his colleagues are doing with regards to this service. And I hope that we accept the request in that. Okay, thank you, Chair. <coughs> uh, all those in for the additional arms, please. Thank you, members. That's coming. Item number six, appreciation. We have before you a letter of thanks from Elisa Campbell on behalf of the parents to celebrate the very pleasant compliment anniversary in the town hall. Okay. We'll, we'll be at it. It's a um, letter of appreciation from a couple of very satisfied with the uh, the town hall appreciation. Second. Move to the second of all the <coughs> Item 7, Senate Plot, we will request to consider the contents of the letter dated the 9th of April 2015 from Mr. Seymour. Mr. Seymour's letter basically invites the Town Council to purchase uh, Senate Plot 1023, but not the old cemetery as it is no longer required. Councillor Gallagher? Move that we accept the request, Chair. Second, Chair. All those in favour? That's fine, thank you. Item number eight, so we can now make Christmas toy appeal. We'll have an offer from Mr. Ranson, the facilities manager, to take the care of the report. Yeah, do you, Chair? The purpose of the report is to request members' approval for the Town Council to work in partnership with the Salvation Army to enable the public to donate unwrapped new toys for spending with children from the ages of one month upwards at the Town Hall main reception for you in December 2015. For members' information, the Salvation Army, based at Landingua, acts as the main home and collection and distribution centre for children's toys uh, for the spending over area. Uh, last year, there was insufficient toys donated to match the required needs, and these were happy to be topped up by uh, purchased toys used funds that had been donated to the Salvation Army. The proposal is that the Town Council reception area becomes a donation point where the public can drop off and place new toys uh, under the Christmas tree for children within the spending mill area during normal office and working hours. Um, spend, the Salvation Army will then collect the toys on a, on a required basis with some key data identified below. It's proposed that the toy appeal is promoted to all the spending news and the Northern Echo. It's also proposed that we write to all spending over schools asking them for support in the campaign. Members are recommended to agree to the proposal that the Town Council support the Salvation Army in the 
collection of unwrapped new toys for children identified in spending room area by social services and probation services. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ransom. Any comments or questions? Comments from the government? Thank you, Chair. Can I first of all thank the Salvation Manager for this report and the hard work you've done with the Salvation Army on this. The great scheme, I'm sure everybody will be able to agree with me. Um, and something that we should be looking to do for the, the most vulnerable people in Spending Um The only comment I do have on it, Chair, if I could, is whether or not we can investigate an early start time for toy collection, perhaps around the October or November time, if possible, just to give a bit longer for people to donate gifts should they wish to. Uh, with that, I move the recommendation with that side now, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, and then we'll slide now into the original recommendations. And we'll take a vote on that. All those in favour of that amendment? That amended motion is carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> now we'll go to item 9, Senate Brigade Opening Times, just for the benefit of the members of the public in attendance tonight. Uh, I'll tell my message and maybe the last question as well. I'm going to tell you I'll just call a short adjournment of two or three minutes, and then I'll go to the other issue going forward. Well, those of you that wish to ask questions, sorry, uh, to come forward, I'll ask you to give your name to Lisa, the committee administrator for the evening. Uh, Lisa will take your names and the questions will be taken in, in that order in the order that you'll be able to come forward. Uh, we will give, because we've got four committee meetings this evening, we will allow 10 minutes for questions. I will be applying standard order 14.5, so that means nobody in the chamber will be allowed to speak for longer than three minutes. Any questions <coughs> the general I will ask Dr. Delaney specifically to the issue of the Senate Brigade opening times and not any other Senate Brigade related issues at this time. If you have any other Senate Brigade related questions or issues you wish to raise, I would ask you to do that out with this one. Right. So if anybody does have any questions, as I say, well, then it's like a German for a couple of minutes. Please feel free to come forward and give me a name as you wish to ask the question to Lisa.
an application of three questions. Uh, the first question will come from a living source and we saw it and invite them to ask you questions. We will give you three minutes then to uh, ask you questions. Can I say? Yeah, well, three questions. First question, we understand that there was a petition, the petition um, had 630 people on who were against the access and were told by the council that you had already petitioned and asked other people um, about blocking them. So, have you got the names of those people you asked is the first question and did they exceed the, the people who, who petitioned against it? That's what I said. The next one was, I guess, the left open now. Can I ask if somebody does access it in the dark and falls, um, are you going to put lights up? Because I would think you'd be liable if somebody did fall. So are you going to spend more money putting lights up in the cemeteries for people who want to go at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night? That's another question. Um, you've already took, mentioned tonight, I heard there about the money. Um, I've heard that... Um, the savings was the reason why, and access was never ever mentioned. But then, in, in future um, notes, uh, things in the paper, it was about access. So that's the other question. You've already answered that, I guess. The other thing was around um, the park and why we've got a fabulous park and we've always wanted to keep that park in the town, but equally, we've got lovely cemeteries as well. And I think we should afford the same security for the cemeteries as we do for our the park. Um, so why can't the park keeper go and lock those gates? If they get the cost. So those are my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Would you like to, if I can just go on and say, please, right. if I've missed anything, well, please, please let us know. Uh, I think the first one was around the, the number of people in the petition. I think it's important to, uh, for people to be aware, the, the original concept or the original idea came from a number of people who rang in. Um, we didn't actually receive any letters in writing. We had received a number of phone calls and there was a couple who lived away who were visiting back and couldn't get access at the time that they wanted because the gates were closed. So we looked at the accessibility and the impact of that accessibility resulted in a saving as well. So in the council view and in the report that I put forward, it was about, um, can I finish please, don't mind? It was about creating accessibility to the public for their loved ones, but also creating a saving of nine and a half thousand pounds. So I think your answer is no, we don't have a petition who was requesting it in the format that you, we've got a petition suggesting that we don't open them. But we did have a number, a significant number, probably at least 10, 12 people who were ringing up, asking, and one couple who came from the camera. In terms, in terms of the lights, how we're going to put lights up, um, that will be a member's decision. At this moment in time, we do have a number of people who are visiting out of hours, but at this stage, they, we don't have them visiting in the black dark. That might change in the window, but at that stage, we're not, we're not, we don't have that level of detail. But at this moment in time, we haven't had a request for lights, so we, we've got no intention of putting lights up unless it's necessary. Right, the cameras, the cameras, what's, going on, what's on at the cemetery, they're not going to, uh, what will the vandals get? Slap wrists. And how's the water provide? The stone can be get damaged. Excuse me, thank you very much for your comments. You yeah. Comment you ah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. With, with, with the greatest respect, we have invited you to give me the opportunity to come and ask a question. I mean, Don't let you well. sit around I'll, there. I would ask you that you have enough for the chair of the yeah. Arthur Wright Club in the and allow me as a member of the public in the right place in this town to have you say it in an already civilised fashion. I appreciate it's an important issue for some people in the town. I would ask you not to shout out from the back of the chamber and we can actually listen to the responses I've provided to the questions you have asked us. Is that okay? I think, in, I think in terms of your question around access and money, it was, it was a dual, it was about access, but also the, the impact of the access has an 
money back for saving money so money was involved as well as part of the report that I presented originally. In terms of your comments around the park and the security, I think one of the things that the council is very proud of, and, and you're right, right to say so much, is our parks and our cemeteries. And if we've got fantastic parks and we've got fantastic cemeteries, then we should be making them accessible to the public. The park, we have received absolutely no requests for any increased access or change into the arrangements so to date, so that hasn't been considered. Okay. Thank you very much. Next question is from Paul Hutchinson. <coughs> Three minutes to ask you a question. Yeah, we won't take that up long. Um, mainly about the cemetery gates, if they're going to be left open 24 hours a day, or cameras put on, is it going to be the same for the parks? So obviously I go out running in the morning at 6 o'clock and I run, I run past the park, I could have a jog around the park but the gates are shut. Um, so if, if it's going to be open for one, it should have to be open for the other one. Um, and the other question is, obviously people pay the council tax for these, for the overtime and everything the town council does. So is there going to be a reduction in the council tax? If you're saving money, obviously <coughs> the people are spending more should. That's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think you know, the question around the park, I think we've, we've sort of answered that, Paul. Um, what I would say is if anybody in the town, in the way that people have contacted uh, Mr. Ranson to request further accessibility to the cemeteries, by all means, it's your town and the if, if you wish to make that request for me and have us put that request for me, you're more than happy to look at that. We'd be happy to look at that. I'm not saying we will do it, but we'd be happy to look at that if that's the feedback we get from, from the rate of peers in respect to it. Um, regarding the other aspect of the question, regarding the council tax decisions, uh, I can't sit here, I'm just chairing the meeting, I don't you know, speak on behalf of the court, the body that is the council. Uh, as Mr. Ranson has outlined, the aim is to increase accessibility to the public in the Senate, so that did also realise the saving. You will be aware, I would think, that um, all councils, parish councils like Spenner, uh, are going to uh, have been subject and will be subject to massive cuts in terms of the subsidy we get um, from from either the chair of central government and so on. Uh, that's again something we'll have to look at as we move forward and see what's to an extent what's dictated to us by by central government, the department of uh, government and what's Thank you. Final question is from Darren Miller. Darren, again, you yes. have three minutes to ask the question. Right, thank you. In the Saturday 9th of May edition of the Spent News, Mr. Colin Ranson has written an article entitled The Town Council Increased Public Access to its Cemeteries. In this article, Mr. Ranson clearly states that the opening is a result of feedback from members of the public to the need for longer open hours and that the council responded to the request. What I would like to know is, why was this article which was in the public domain only on the basis of these increased hours and why did it not include the financial justification which is now being presented in the next minutes? To me that's deliberately misleading the public and I want an answer on that. Is that the end of the question? Is that your single question, sir? Yes. Okay. As well as the others I'll put it which I'm expecting an answer in writing. Yeah. Um, I think to be honest, it wasn't, it wasn't in an attempt to mislead the public in any shape or form. It was to advise the public that we've received a number of requests. Um, can, the, can the facilities be open? We've, we responded to that. Um, at the time, we believed it was the right thing to do because the public were asking. And as a consequence, we opened The impact of that, as, as we openly say, is a saving of £9,500. That's, that hasn't been, that has, that's been, yeah. on all, that's been oh, public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Gold, can I just say to you as well, I'm, I think the town plan may have spoken to you, but you will be receiving a written response that could have gone out the day, but I didn't want to preempt right. you asking yeah. questions. Also as well, I hope that comes through soon, because I put a letter of complaint on the 21st of April, 
When your policy plate is stated out for a month or in seven days, I only received the letter yesterday. Yes, that's the one. The letter that you're going to receive will cover every point that you've raised in your initial and, and your separate letter, Mr. Lowe. We'll be really saying that this, this service is the only thing that's to come um, So I've got the notification of the three questions. To come back and thank you very much for your, 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 your comments and questions that you've asked today. Um, the council will take consideration. What I will say before I come back to Mr. Ransom's report to fellow council members in the chamber, uh, I'm not going to sit and read out the petition or every letter, but that is available for me to I will ask all the fellow members as the representatives of the town of Nature if you do read what we digest this. As we just before, we'll make sure we have digested all the correspondence. Okay. I'll have to report from Mr. Ransom, come back and recommend these um, proposals at section for the recommendation. I would like to come back to that phase and ask for a bit more on that. I've got a hand up for a bit. I'll take a couple of the darks and I'll take a couple of the darks. Then, get off that phase. There's something that's been said tonight, and we're going to I think that we're right to revisit the situation. I'd like to propose a motion and accept option 4.2, which everybody gets some violent to The council, in terms of the monetary that's been suggested, people who wish to visit later at night, and also the people who want the gates locked. If we get the power cable to do it, everybody's a winner. And that's my motion. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it's important that we first of all say that I think most members sat down here have got some loved one or someone who's close to them buried in one of those two cemeteries. I certainly have. Um, we originally brought this proposal to the table, as the facilities manager suggested, for two reasons. One of those was to increase the access and increase the level of service that we provide to the people of Spenmore, and the other one was yes save some money and that is £9,500. That £9,500 of course doesn't compare in any way to the amount of money which we are potentially going to be losing due to local government reform and, and the reduction of the local council tax support scheme over the next couple of years. And it is going to be difficult for us as a council to find the savings we need to make to keep the roads balanced. Um, and, and this is obviously one part of that. The cemetery gates have now been open for a month. They were first opened in the, on the 11th and the 12th that weekend of April. And since then, we've had no instances of vandalism reported to us or to the police on either of the cemetery sites. That's not to say that we're not listening to the people of Spenning Road. And we have here today a petition of 600 odd people, not all from Spenning Road, I must say. And obviously, we've had some representations from the people tonight. And we're here to listen to them. We've changed the way we, we, we took this meeting tonight so that we could listen to the papers turning around. And I wouldn't want anybody to say that we weren't listening, because that's certainly what we're up to tonight. What I will say, however, is there are certainly more people who have not signed this petition in Spenningborough than who have signed it. There's an electorate of 15,000 people in Spenningborough, and that is over 14,000 people who haven't opposed this change in some way or another. And we have to bear that in mind. Yeah, 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 shit. Shit out. comments regarding Jubilee Park? Excuse me, can we please have the board in the chamber? We have allowed certain members to speak. I've got Councillor Gallagher here in the middle of, in, in, of making a response and in, in making a speech. Um, so I, I would like to ask you to move forward in the courtesy of actually Finishing what he was about to say. Thank you, Chairman. On um, the comments regarding Jubilee Park and why we haven't left Jubilee Park open 24 7. Parks and open spaces such as that are very attractive places to get into, especially for, for you, the young people and people who, who want to congregate in groups. Cemeteries are not that, Chairman. Cemeteries are places where people want to go and respect their dead loved ones. Um, we have a couple of our councillors have been down today and looked at the CCTV systems that we put in place for security of those systems. The people, people are going into these cemeteries now in the outer hours and they are clearly not groups of people, they are people going to mourn graves. And I think that is very important. So what we set out to achieve is happening. 
Now what I want to suggest today is that we, we will never look at this again. In fact, when we first moved this proposal, which was under constant review, and will still be under constant review. And if there are cases of vandalism that happen, then of course we'll look at them and we'll expect them to be reported straight to this chamber so that we can look at it in the future. I will move an amendment to the motion that Councillor Dax has presented. Um, and that is purely for the reason that we took this decision here unanimously, it is not a political decision. I would like to go with option 4.5, Chairman, which is to continue with the current arrangements because I and other councillors in this room believe this is the best way forward. And with a further review of the take after a set date of time, I do want to see a bit further, further down the line, whether or not this policy is working. I believe it is. There have been no cases of vandalism so far, and I do not expect them to be. This is a group service for the people, for the people of spending money, and the majority of the people of spending money have not signed this petition. I move on to 4.5 as an amendment to Council of Dad's motion. Thank you, second that motion, Chair. This way, yes. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? This way, yes. This way, yes. Let me give you the courtesy. Give them a bit of time. One second. Please. Have they heard of being proactive? Do we have to wait until something happens? That is exactly right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 Different opinions may be put forward. It's the same as the proposals within the report from the facilities manager. One set of proposals has been proposed. Another recommendation has been put forward as an amendment. How it works now is we'll take a vote on the amendment first. If that falls, then we'll come back to the 4.2 as proposed by Councillor Dax and Thomas. We have an amendment proposed by Councillor Gellar and seconded by Councillor Nelson. On the night, it was all around the week. Some of us did because we felt visiting, visiting on the night was what some people wanted. But what I would like to be seen to do is consult. I think if we fail, it's because we failed to consult. Within the next couple of months, I understand, well, two to three months. We've gone out for a full consultation around the town. We employ university students to do it. I'd like to make sure that this is included on that consultation so that we do get a true reflection from everybody in Spendor what the theme is. Then we'll get away from this argument where only 600 people out of 15,000 responded and 14,500 haven't. So I'd like to see us carry on with that one of four, uh, four point. Two. But bear in mind that we should go out for further consultation and moving forward, I think the council should be looking to somehow create on our website, and I know Council Gallagher is leading the subcommittee on IT for better consultation because this probably could have been avoided if somehow we'd been able to speak to the people spending on it before the decision was made.
with a further review of your material after a set period of time. I will just specify by the one in attendance, this is the last meeting of this committee as guys, the council just public knowledge is very structured in the committee system, so we'll be successfully in whatever guys to this committee following next month's annual meeting, so the next meeting, the successor committee for this one, which will be at some point in June, will then agree the review period. I will just reiterate, I'd like to thank everybody, members and members of the public who have attended this course this issue, and thank you for your attendance and your contribution. I will say that the Chair Town Council do take very seriously all of the services we make these elements of that. We have installed CCTV for some of these sites. The recommendation of the Council is that this board not agrees to the review. And as you can see from the proposals put forward in the facilities managers report, what is effectively done there is given this council a comprehensive suite of options, alternative options that we will look at in the future should we work through. But I will remind everybody in attendance here, members of the public, there have been no incidences, incidents sorry, of vandalism in highly power assemblies. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, and in the in the high of most church made a recommendation to the new
spending on town hall clients such as uh, prizes for charity nights, including golf days, bed and breakfast at the hotels, offers free music festivals and event tickets. They've also assisted in the increase of wedding business by providing uh, a breakfast for the happy couple that are in the Ramside Hall Hotel or Harvard Hall Hotel free <coughs> and then they purchased one of our wedding, uh, the, uh, wedding packages within the town hall. Ramside events have also introduced from 2014 on average 12 party nights per year, which has had significantly helped increase the town hall function business. Ramside Spa Hotel is also now going through a £15 million refurbishment, including new bedroom golf with additional 18 pool golf course, a luxury spa, a swimming pool, swimming pool rather, and Thai restaurant. Uh, the, new and spa, the new spa and swimming pool will be an additional benefit to our wedding customers at the town hall and some sample photographs for members to see there. I think it is important to say that the, the, the spa facility will not be a free facility to any residents or our wedding guests. Um, it is a facility that needs to be paid for. Um, there's a, on the section for the detail of booking history covering back from 2011 up to 2015, and members can see the increase following the change in the introduction of the partnership. Um, it should be noted that the 2015 figures were accurate at the 27th of April, with an additional eight months of trading uh, still available to increase bookings and the number of weddings. It's proposed that members note the increase in bookings and the town hall continue to work in partnership with Ramsar events and look to continue to package offers around the benefits that Ramside events and its hotels can bring to the town hall customers. Thank you, Mr. Ramsay. Thank you, Chairman. I've never been such a manager for I think this is really one of the great success stories we've had, certainly since uh, the last uh, local government elections when we were on the council in 2013. Um, I remember when I came on as a new councillor, we were in a sort of limbo position with the bar and Cape and uh, Dave at that time. And we have managed since then to secure a very successful bar and Cape and package within the town hall. The figures speak for themselves there, Chairman. More booth nights than we've, we've had in any of the previous five years. Less three nights than we've had in any of the previous five years. And a substantial number of wins, twice as many wins now we've had since 2011. Um, I think that's a real testament to Mr. Ranson's hard work and to the successful partnership we now have with Ramside Events. Um, that said, I don't think there's scope for a more detailed report into this and I would like at a future meeting of the Policy and Resources Committee to, um, to look at the financial side of this and see really how much more income we're now making as a town council and whether or not we've got a better deal for the taxpayers um, in, in picking up on this partnership. And I know once we get the accountancy uh, in place within the town council, that the facilities might be able to provide that. I will make my decision to report, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Any comments? Say the vote for that, or was it fair? Thank you, Madam Assembly. Thank you very much. Five items on the agenda. Number 11, four is for Mr. Blair. Say before you, the council has just finished on the part. Well, it's all about that, I don't know. Right. Uh, email from Councillor Pat Martin, who will be approached by. Uh... Sorry, Councillor, I'm going to be approached by the guy who will apologise. As everybody's aware, it's the 60th card this year, and the committee has worked all fully aware of the support of the town council, working towards having an exceptional fun film day for the residents of Spain over the next couple of years. Uh, it's all about the town council and 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 the town council. Gert Gala Committee would like to make use of the hip boardings that are situated at Misty Blue Farm uh, and bring them into the park as part of our city of Gala. Comments, members? Councilor Gala? Councilor Gala? I was approached by the Gala Committee because with it being our 60th year, you know, ultimately it's a big event, it could possibly have. Um, I know previously, obviously, the government said about that. We have had, you know, all sorts of things in the park and the and showing the pit boys and everything. 
And um, the gallery is the miniatures with this blue, um, a blue of the ponies, run the pony club. They actually take the ponies into homes for dementia patients and everything. Um, and we just thought it would be a really nice addition to put into the parade and to take into the park. Um, they've also said, and this is they have the paints that they use, and they can take paints and they, they paint the, the ponies and everything, so then, like I said, dementia patients or kids can go and do that. It doesn't harm the ponies at all. Obviously, we need this all to be risk assessed, and that is what will happen as well. So I'm just saying, you know, that was just the update. I don't really need to hopefully get permission to have the ponies. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, obviously, this is the 60th Spring Road Gala. We know how important the gala is to the town, not only to bring the community together, but to the effect it has on our local businesses. And as, as long as that's it, then they say that we support the gala in any way I can. It's a special one this month because it is such an anniversary, we've been playing the 60th, and I think anything we can do to make it that bit more special is really important. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. 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 Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Lott for bringing this to our attention and to have work that I know she's been involved in this year with the Gala Committee and the other members of the Gala Committee and I wish the event all its success. In no. that, Mr Chairman, I move that the request be accepted. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so thank you Councillor Lott for your contribution. It's been moved and second. What I will say, the town of Black has pointed out to me that you would be certain the criteria stipulations. I think you mentioned on council a lot about risk assessments, so we would have to look at things like public liability, removal of any natural waste generated by the horses, etc. That would all fall apart. Like yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank you, Chair.